G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. New little pattern for you all today. It's a little cuckoo. No, it's a little cuckoo clock. And it's made up in felt and fabrics and it's really simple to make. It's a lot easier than it looks. You just need a great pattern. I've got one of those for you as usual. It's in the description below. All you need to do is click on that link and download your free pattern templates. Now make sure that you set your printer to printed actual size and those templates will be absolutely spot on. So what are we waiting for? Let's get sewing. But wait, remember, listen, listen for my movie quotes. So let me show you what we're going to need to make up our little clock today. Now, as far as colours go, colour schemes go, I'm going to go for very bright again. I'm just too colourful for words. Um, I'm going to go for those same brights, but of course you could theme yours. You could make it a, um, you know, all in pinks or all in blues. Uh, something like that. Also this little one you could make up looking very very Christmassy if you like um, and put some little more festive little things on it uh, but today I'm going for the same kind of look only I'm using the deeper chocolate this time. Now I've got my front and back pieces here and they both have a fusible woven interfacing on the back of those with that little center piece cut out of course we're going to need all of our little pieces, our decorative pieces. Now, I like to cut the little clock face outer circle. I actually cut that one in fabric and that is the only thing I've used here in fabric. But you can use, you make up your little hearts and, and so on and your little leaves. You can use fabric if you like. It depends on how you're finishing the edges. Um, my clock face I like to do in felt. Make sure on your little felt centerpiece there that you mark your little center spot for your little hands to go in. And then of course we've got all of our little pieces. We've got our little butterfly which I'm making with a, a purple background so it shows up a little more on this brown. I've got my two little heart pieces, my flowers. This one's made up in three pieces, little one in the middle and of course our two little bird pieces which are cut one and one reverse because we actually sew those together and that one will be up there and also some assorted little leaves. You'll see the cutting instructions for those really adds a little pop of colour there. So we've got all of those. Now this little base piece I actually like to create a little white or off-white um, band around that and which I cut with my pinking shears. So what I go ahead and do, I've got my little piece of felt ready and it has uh, fusible webbing on the back or heat and bond and I'm actually going to peel off that little piece and I'm going to press that one on while I've still got the paper left on this one. I'm going to press that one on and what that allows me to do then is cut with my pinking shears around that edge to leave just that little you can see that little pinking shear edge revealed it's got that little clock like look to it you don't have to add that but you can if you like and it does tend to frame up that little inner circle really well so I will be doing that you will also need your little top roof section with your little scalloped edge. It seems to look nice in a lighter colour but if you are making this up in maybe a you know you can make it up in a baby blue or something like that of course you can change that top colour there um, and along that roof line I like to add a little bit of rickrack so any braid will work. Rickrack tends to be in keeping with this very German little cuckoo clock style I'll just be using the pink. You also need a filler for the center that goes in in between both those layers and this is actually um, stiffened felt. Stiffened felt is readily available in all of your craft stores. You should be able to find it in, um, here in Australia we have it in Spotlight, we have it in Lincraft, but you would have it in Joann's and Michael's. All the big craft stores will stock this one. If you can't find it, you could have a look online. If you can't find it, just use a, a piece of felt with a very firm interfacing pressed onto it instead. So you can see the consistency of that. It's quite rigid. 
but we use it because we can still get our needle through to sew on our buttons at the end. Um, you're going to be needing some, some buttons for decoration. So two little buttons I use for my little tassels to hang from. And I usually coordinate those with the backing fabric. Otherwise, I feel like it gets a little bit too busy. Um, and of course, your buttons you need for centering your little flowers. And they go in there. And you also need a little, an appropriate button for the center of your little clock to mark out your hands. I'm hanging this one from the little top edge, so I need a little bit of cord. You could also use a little bit of your rick rack, um, any kind of little strong cord that will just slip in there in between those layers to create a loop will work just fine. You'll also need some clear craft glue suitable for fabric, something fairly quick drying, some extra strong threads, and of course I'm using my extra strong Gudeman threads for any of my little embroidery work as well. Um, and I'm um, using a pearl thread actually for the very outside just because it's got a bit of heavier weight. Uh, and then we will need now hanging something hanging from to finish off your little your little uh, clock there with your little tassels. I've included two little tassels. I just think it works really well with this project. And I actually have I'm not going to be actually demonstrating those today because I already have a video that shows you exactly how to make those little felt tassels. It's really quick and there's no sewing involved. So, and we have those made on, make sure when you make them up, if you're making them up, you add a nice long string and I've got, uh, I'm using pearl thread there doubled because we're going to be tying those on. So have a look at that video. I'm going to put that link up there for you so you can check that out. Alternatively, you could just use your, your double thread and you could make a little, um, what we'd say, a little eclipse shape out of buttons. So you could go through all of your buttons and back again, you've got a little stack of colored, colorful buttons to hang. You could actually go ahead and make a little, perhaps a, a little felt shape that has some little buttons on it in a heart or something like that and hang those. Um, you may have some perfect little beads and you could do a smaller one and a larger one and a smaller one to create that, that little oval look. I'm sure there's a million things that you've got that you could hang there that would just complement your little project but I like the little tassels just because they're so in keeping with the rest of my project. So check that one out. So to start with we are going to take all of these off and we're just going to work on our front piece we've got here and our first step is to remove our backing paper and we're going to press this little roof section in place. We want to line it up, you'll see that it will line up beautifully with that top line because this little clock we're not turning through it's all going to be joined together and stitched now where you how you sew your little pieces on uh, on this project today is up to you you could after you've pressed that on you could use a blanket applique stitch to do this lower edge but I'm actually going to use I like it very clean so I actually sew that lower edge on the machine. So once I've pressed that on with a hot iron and a protective cloth, I go ahead and sew in a matching cream thread just that lower edge there. And then we're going to be adding our rick rack, which will settle the top edge in. So you can go ahead and do that step first. Now you can see there that I've just stitched that little lower edge into place. Now I'm going to add my rick rack. Now I'm going to take my rip rag. I'm going to, I've cut it just a little bit longer than I need and I'm going to find one of those top curves there and I'm just going to put a, pop a pin in there just to make sure it's all nicely lined up and then I'm just going to pull that down and stitch that into place basically right down the centre there but I'll start stitching from the top so that I get it both sides all nice and straight. You can see I've left a little overlap there Leave those little pieces on because we're going to tuck those under when we sandwich the front and back together. So I'm just going to stitch my rick rack on with, uh, I'll use a matching thread. I 
Okay, so now you can see I've got my little rick rack in place, so that's our little roof section done. I've now gone ahead and pressed that little fabric circle onto my felt that still has my heat and bond on the back. All of these little pieces that we're cutting out, they're cutting out very precisely. I'm actually going to put a link to a video I have that shows you about cutting and layout. It'll help you with all these little pieces. So this one now is nicely pressed on and I'm going to take my pinking shears and I'm going to cut around that whole edge. Now I can make it a little wider if I want to but it just gives that that lovely little finish. You see I'm just going to make my way around and it's going to give me that lovely little edge. You can see that's nicely cut out there and now we just remove that backing paper and we're just going to fuse that one into place with a hot iron and protective cloth and that is about three centimeters from the base. Now you want to make sure that everything is lined up and that you've made your measurements that it's the same distance from each side. So make sure it's all lined up and then you can press that one into place and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just stitch around on the fabric part just inside close just as I did here and stitch that one into place just so that it's really settled there before we add our little center disc. Right, so I have my little fabric disc now. That one is stitched into place. I've gone ahead and pressed on my little centre disc, which is my felt. And now I've gone ahead, and because we had our little centre mark in there, you're able to just to mark in your 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and your 9 o'clock points. Because when we're sewing... In our, with our little blanket applique stitch. We're just going to extend those four stitches out just to indicate those little numbers. But before we do that, we're going to sew in our little hands and I'm going to do that on the machine. So obviously you can choose whatever time you like and it's just a matter of making a little mark. Use a, I'm using a very fine black marker because I'm using black to sew those hands in and just make your, uh, your hands one little shorter than the other and your minute hand uh, will be longer of course and make that right close to the end and then a little shorter with your hour hand and then we're going to stitch that two times in black thread on the machine. I just find it gives you the neatest, clearest result and it's nice and straight. Then once we're sewing around the outside of our circle with our blanket applique stitch, we can add our two little points. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch in my hands on the machine. Okay, so now you can see my little hands are stitched into place. And now I've got my needle and I have threaded with my extra strong Gutemann top stitching thread. And I've got that in black. And definitely need to use black so that those little little marks around that edge show up really well and you can see there that I've come in from behind just got a knot in the end of my needle in my thread and I'm just making little stitches they're about two and a half to three millimeters the stitches that go right the way around but when I get to this little mark which is one of my my key numbers I'm going to extend that stitch out just so that it's a little more obvious and it just marks out those four points so I'm going to make my way all the way around. If you haven't sewn a blanket applique stitch before, I'm going to put a link up there. I've got a video that shows you how to do that one and that will really help you out. But basically it's just a matter of going into your fabric and taking up some of that underneath fabric, keeping your stitches nice and even and coming through the loop. And that will create that lovely little binding edge. And make sure that, especially on something like a circle, that you're rotating your work as you go so that your stitches are all going straight out. Otherwise, I can tend to have a bit of a lean. So just going to make my way around, extending those stitches in those four points as I go. And then I'm just going to add my little points on the ends of my hands, as you can see I've done there with this one. And so there you can see I've got my little clock face all nicely stitched in place. We will be adding our button, but we won't do that 
until a little bit later because we're still pressing things on there and that little button will get in the way. So that one's all done. So our next step is to move on and we're going to do our leaves. Now to do our leaves we need to position our little flowers into place so we know exactly where we want our leaves to go. So I've just got one of the larger ones and I've got the medium sized one and they are at the top and the little tiny leaf just pulled to the side there, another medium one down the bottom and a little tiny one. Now the things you need to remember are we do want, we sew these two flowers on after we have assembled the whole thing. That's, they're one of the last things to go on and we do that because we want to have a little overlap. We don't want it all tucked in, we want some sitting over. This one will be sewn in before we put it together. Um, so now I've got that all laid out, I want just my little lower leaves just to peek out from the underside. Remember also that you're going, you're going to have your two little buttons there for your little tassels that hang down, so you don't want to be interfering with those. And once you've got that placement all set, now all of these little pieces of course have heat and bond on the back and we want uh, only the leaves are being actually fused into place. So in some cases I use heat and bond just to preserve the edges of that felt. Also makes your cutting out process much easier for little shapes. Um, but that little bit of heat and bond on the back is going to keep those edges nice and crisp. So now I've got those all settled where I want them, those little leaves, I can remove these pieces and I will go and press those little pieces on with my hot iron and a protective cloth and then I'm going to go ahead on the machine and I'm, going to, I'm not going to sew all the way around those little leaves. Now of course you could, you might want to use the same blanket applique stitch and stitch each little leaf on. You can do as much work on this project as you like. But you can see that what I've done there is I have just created a couple of little stems that will be hidden under this flower. So you only need to come out a little way. And I've stitched each leaf on just through the center. Done the same at the bottom here. Now what I like about this is this little project has got a little 3D effect to it. So you find that those little edges sit up just a little and it just gives you a little bit more dimension. So, and I'll be using the same green that I did before so that it really shows up. And I sew those little stitching lines twice so that they're very, very clear. So I'm going to go ahead and, and do that on every one of my little leaves there. So now I have my little leaves all stitched into place. You see that's a lovely little effect with a little bit of stem there. We add the flowers later. And now I've gone ahead and I've pressed on the first of my little heart shapes. I like to do them one at a time because it stops me rubbing up on, on the, the, the top one. I keep everything nice and as crisp as I can. So I'm going to go and sew a blanket applique stitch around the whole outside of that heart. Of course, if you want to speed things up, you can do that, that on the machine. I do like the blanket applique on this. It is a very German traditional sort of little look with those very contrasting colors and the doubling up of those felts. So I'm going to do that one in, I'm using my bright yellow and I am using my Gudeman top stitching thread again. Um, you can use embroidery thread for this if you like. If you do, I would use two strands to keep it all nice and fine. So I will sew right around the outside of that one and then I will press on my second little heart and do the same with that one. And there I have my little hearts all stitched on nicely. And so our next step now is to add our little butterfly. Now a little butterfly does overlap a little, but it's not sewn down. It's only sewn down right in the center there. So we're still getting that nice pull up little 3D effect there on our finished product. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be stitching just the center. So just from the base here of that butterfly up to the top and I'm going to go back and forward in black probably about three or four times to really mark in that center and that will push that little center line down and cause those little wings to sit up a little. And I will be adding, as you can see here, 
I added a couple of little antennae just up there. I did it in the black there, but this one I'll do it in a lighter colour so that it can be seen. And I mean, you can also add on the ends of those couple of little beads would be pretty. You can embellish this any way that you like. So I'm going to go ahead and you see the positioning of that one. Now while it overlaps just a little bit, that's fine because when we go to do our blanket stitching around the outside edge, we can still get to that edge to do that. It won't interfere too much. And that little overlap is really pretty. It balances out the other side. So it's all working together. So I'm just going to go ahead stitch across those two there and make my little antennae. And so once my little butterfly is in place there, see those two little antennae there, we can now go ahead and add our two little buttons that we can add now. So I've my little center of my clock and I've added my little flower because that's on the inside. Um, but before you add that little flower, make sure that you take the time to check your placement uh, that that's everything is sitting where you want it to be. I like there to be a little a little of, bit of overlap on that little uh, clock face there and the others just extending either side. Once you're right, just sew those on and then we're ready to move ahead and glue our front to our back. So we're going to keep everything nice and flat there and we're going to take actually our back section and lay that one down and we have our stiffened felt which is going to sit exactly in the center there. Now you want to make sure that you've got the same amount of room around every edge there and particularly in our little center part here we're going to be stitching around that on the inside. So it's just a matter of applying glue. Now before we do that we're going to add our little loop which just sits in behind here. I'm going to glue that one into place so that that will just extend beyond and then we're going to add our filler on top of that. So I'm going to apply just a little bit of glue to that one using my clear craft glue. I'm just going to put a little bit at the top there. those two ends together and you might want to clamp that in place while we're adding our little filler piece. Just a matter of making sure those edges are nicely lined up and then we can pop a little clip on there, hold those little two edges together and we need to glue the whole face of this piece here. You can see I've coated that one with glue. Just going to flip that one over and it really is just a matter of lining that up perfectly and of course it will sit over that little cord piece that you have there and it's going to trap that nicely in between those layers. Make sure you have it all lined up. It's the same on every side and press that one down. So now I have that one in place. I have now glued up the whole back of that one again and particularly pay attention to these edges here right the way around and the edges on the inside of that little uh, that little peep hole there and all over the back. I've also glued my little rickrack edges under ready to be incorporated and while you're there with your glue it helps to glue your little flower stacks together ready for later for popping on. So now that that one's all glued up nicely we've just got to add that front to the back and make sure that you get that all lined up beautifully. So once you've got that one in place you want to be paying particular attention to this little pee pee hole here and really press those edges together and we're going to be stitching around that section. You really want everything to line up nicely. That's where your cutting is very important. The, begin the beginning parts are very important um, to end up with a nice uh, even finish here. If you've got any overlap here, you can see a little bit of overlap here, that's fine. We can trim that up before we stitch it. That's not a problem, but it's very important. This one's very, uh, very well matched up. So it's a matter of going around and really pressing down and over those little edges. Don't forget under your butterfly here 
and particularly this top edge and make sure you've really pressed everything nice and flat and then we can go ahead and let that one dry now that needs to be really dry before we move forward with any of the rest of the work we're going to do here so how about while our glue is drying we go ahead and let's get our little bird ready now we've got our two little bird pieces and you can see there and they have a uh, fusible webbing applied too even though we're not using it for that i'm using the fusible web in this case just to make it very stable uh, so i've added a little circle of felt there just in the center just plain felt I did a little spot of glue and pop that right in the middle it just gives a little bit a little bit of substance so you can do that if you like, you, you don't have to. Um, you can just sew the two edges together as I am here. So what I'm going to be doing is just coming in, I've got my white matching thread with a knot in the end and it's my extra strong thread again. I've got all my edges lined up. It's a little bit too small to pin. You find you don't need to, it's felt. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew the tiniest little blanket stitch right around that edge just to t join those two pieces together you can see I'm going through both layers and I'm coming out through the loop and that's going to make a nice little bound edge for our little bird who's going to be attached just sitting on top next to that little peepee -pee hole and it gives it a nice little finished edge a very little 3d look so you can see what I'm doing there so it's binding that felt edge nicely I'm gonna make my way right the way around my little bird there so there's my little bird all nicely stitched and you can see I've just added just one little stitch to create a little tiny little black eye there so that little one's already we'll just put her aside now and we can go ahead now I've got my my little clock is all dry and I've been able to take that one to the machine and I have stitched just from this lower edge here around the whole top and round to this lower edge here and that has incorporated that little loop nicely. I do that part on the machine because it's a very straight edge and um, and I can hide that thread colour in there. You could blanket applique that whole edge if you wanted to um, but I like to think that that little loop is really well anchored in there so our next step is to go ahead and we're going to sew a blanket stitch around the inside edge of our little pee pee hole there and you can see there that I'm using now I'm using an eight ply pearl thread I'm going to go for that contrasting color in the, in the cream and I've come in from behind and come out between the two layers so just with a little knot that won't be seen anyway and I've made my first little stitch here now it's not too difficult because you've got plenty of room in that little opening so we're just going to go ahead with our standard blanket stitch if you haven't sewn a blanket stitch before I'm going to put the link up there for you and you can see I'm just going through both layers coming out through the loop and I've got quite good, good access now. You want that little opening to be really nice and neat and tight there. I'm going to make my way right the way around and I can pull my needle through that opening without any problems at all. So you can see how that's going to just mark out those little edges there beautifully now once I've done that I'm then going to go ahead and I'm going to use the same thread and I'm going to sew the same blanket stitch all the way around my lower edges you can see like I have here and this just gives it a beautiful little finish all the way around okay so there you can see that I've got all of my blanket stitching done all the way around and now I've been able to add my final little flowers sew through all layers and also my little buttons here they're actually just about two centimeters from the bottom and uh, three centimeters from this point here to here make sure they're nicely lined up 
The measurements could be different for you depending on the size of your buttons of course and what you're hanging. You could also have three little hanging things um, at different lengths so that's entirely dependent on what you're doing there. So now that they're all on our final step is to add our little bird and so I've got a doubled extra strong thread and I haven't got a knot at the end because we're going to be tying off so I'm going to come in from behind now positioning of this little bird it's just so that her little head is just above that little the little hole there so we're going to come in from behind I've made a little mark there you probably can't see it it's very light and I'm going to come in from behind about on that mark pull through not all the way through leave some tail ends hanging there and then I'm just going to dive into my little bird at the back not all the way through just through that backing so take a nice big stitch and then I'm going to go back in again pull that one through and you can see I can pull both my ends through there she settled nicely in that spot and then I can just tie off those two ends from behind I can just knot them off a couple of times and then snip that one off so now I just want to tie up my little tassels or whatever it is that you're going to be hanging from your little clock and the way that I've done that is when you put your tassel together make sure you've got a nice long double thread there and where I want the base of that one to sit the length that I want it to sit from that button I tie a knot so I knot through both and then I've got these two ends here and I can just slip that knot underneath that button pull that one in underneath that button pull that up there and then I just tie off around that button those two ends and you will notice that most cuckoo clocks have their little ornamental pieces that hang down and they're usually always asymmetrical so they're not the same length although if you do three you can have one shorter one in the middle and then you can have two longer ones down the side so all I need to do is snip those thread ends off and there we have our beautiful little finished cuckoo clocks I love both those colors um, I'd love to see them made up in the pastels though so I, I nearly made this one up in a sort of a this green a mint green as the background with all the other colors with it so there's so much you could do and I think that you could make them if it's around Christmas time you could definitely make them up to be quite festive um, in Christmas colours and maybe substituting your flowers for some holly and some berries. I can see some little candy canes on there especially with the rick rack don't you think? I can see it. And also for your little hanging tassel pieces I was thinking that something like this which is a little this pattern is available there's a video for that one that I have for my little bunnies clothes if you have a look for that one this little heart pendant wouldn't that look fabulous hanging it could hang from the center or perhaps just do two one longer than the other it's very much in keeping with that whole style so that would work too so so many options I need somewhere to hang it I might let me see if I can find somewhere to hang it and I can show you it hanging up. There we go, hanging up there next to all of my other little creations. You can see how beautiful it looks. It will look particularly nice hanging against a flat little wall. But I hope you've enjoyed making my lovely little cuckoo clock. Well, thank you all for watching today. Hope you've enjoyed making this little one. I really enjoyed designing this one. And you know, this week I've been really, really heartened by so many of you in the comments have been telling me that you have been um, including your children in my videos and them watching it with you and enjoying the projects with you. 
We definitely need more creative people in the world, don't we? So, you know, there's one in every family. There's two in mine. So let's encourage our young people to learn these skills as well. So you can also follow me on Instagram, speaking of that, and we can, um, you can send me pictures and then I can share them on my special Pinterest board that I've made just to show off all your beautiful work. The board you're looking for is called You Made It. And why not come along and check that out and see what everybody else is doing um, with my patterns and all the little different creative things you do with them. It's really exciting. Let's make Pay It Forward a really positive place to be. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so. I would hate for you to miss out on any of the upcoming patterns. So many coming, coming your way and there's the sweetest little pin cushion coming up. You really don't want to miss that one. So who caught my movie quotes? You'll have to tell me in the comments. Most of all, everybody, all of those good things that come your way in your day, make sure that you share them and you pay them forward. And until next time, it's Huru from me.